Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Debbie and this is Debbie's Bookshelf. Just because I read a lot of books. <laughs> Originally this started as a case of me just reading through all the books in the house. I put them on my bookshelf and I've been making my way through them. But then it's also gone into reading stuff on Box and Kindle. Just, yeah, I just, I'm reading all the time. And I love it. I always have a book on hand. At the moment I am reading The Big Sky Collection by CJ Box. The first one was Three Weeks to Say Goodbye and this one is Blue Heaven. Now, I decided to do these separately rather than doing the sum ups like I have been doing for a couple of others. Mainly because they're just they're more independent stories. I think going into Back of Beyond, I think it will be starting to be a bit more cohesive. But with Blue Heaven, it's just a case of it's set in the same area and this does not have any common characters. The first appearance of Cody Hoyt was in Three Weeks to Say Goodbye. He is not in Blue Heaven, but it was still a fantastic story. I stayed up till about 10.30 last night reading it after I got sent home from work. <laughs> that sounds weird. I had holiday to use up and my uh, team leader, Emma, looked at me while I was on my lunch break and said, Debs, you'll need some holiday, you can go home at 4.30. And it was just like, sure, thank you. And then, yeah, so I got home about just before five-ish probably. I cooked and then sat on the sofa until 10.30 while everybody else had gone to bed because it was a point when it was just like, I am just so engrossed in this book. And like people were saying goodnight and it was just like, everybody shooting each other. Good night. <laughs> that was literally how I said goodnight to people. It was just like, everybody's killing each other. Please leave me alone, but good night. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to read that blurb and I'll just tell you why I was just completely engrossed in this book. If 12-year-old Annie hadn't been angry with her mother, she never would have taken her younger brother William on a secret fishing trip deep into the North Idaho woods. And they never would have witnessed the execution. Now they're running for their lives. There's nowhere for William and Annie to hide. And no one they can trust. Until they meet Jess Rawlins. Rawlins, an old school rancher, knows something is wrong with the law in Blue Heaven. But he is only one against four men who will stop at nothing to silence their witnesses. Oh, this was... yeah. <laughs> I just could not put this book down. But at the very beginning of the book, Annie and William's mother Monica has had a man over. Now normally she tries to keep any men that she has over away from the kids but this particular man decides to go and cook breakfast and Annie and William see him. Monica is not happy at all about the fact that her sleepover friend has decided to meet the kids because Monica made a promise to Annie and William a very long time ago that she would only introduce them to somebody if she thought it was going to be a case of this could be your new dad type of situation so yeah one night stands things like that she tries to keep them away from the kids and the kids don't like him <laughs> though he does offer to take them on a fishing trip so annie and william they finish school and there is no sign of this boyfriend who had promised to take them on a fishing trip so they go and get his fishing things and go into the woods and they go to find the lake by themselves without the boyfriend and it just that's just the start of a chain of events um, there's a local woman who sees them walking along and Annie and William just they go we just go fishing and so she picks them up in the car and drops them off closer to where they want to go fishing and that later turns into a case of this woman was the last person to see them alive but yeah so annie and william while trying to find this lake while trying to go fishing they come across a group of men and they witness a murder as it's in the blurb it's an execution they see these is it three of them shooting them or is it four of them four yeah i think it's five men in total so it's four of them each shoot this guy and annie knows exactly what she's seen she grabs william and they just go on the run they leave the fishing gear, she loses a shoe along the way, and uh, yeah, so that's the evidence left of the last time that Annie and William were seen. It soon comes out that they cannot trust anybody, because they are picked up by a guy called Swan, who at first they think he's a nice guy, 
because they know that Swan knows their mother Monica and so they're like oh okay this seems like safety still will get in his car and then Annie hears Swan talking to the guys that just shot this guy and she's like oh wait no no we can't trust him we need to get out or we need to run so they do and you realise that at the beginning of the book that you are seeing from the baddies point of view a lot this is a book where you know who the baddies are and you're trying to figure out how everybody else is going to figure out who is involved. So you've got this group of five retired LA police officers who have come up to what is known as Blue Heaven. It's a very common place for LA police officers to retire to. A group of five retired police officers have come to Blue Heaven because they were involved in something which is actually being investigated by somebody else another point of view who you see via toro pronounced it's spelt villa toro but it's pronounced via toro you're told throughout the um narrative the mispronunciation and the actual pronunciation via toro he's investigated something that happened in la he is now retired there's this one case that he needs to find out what happened where um there was a uh, race course where as they were taking the money out before the patrons left, basically there was a bit of a raid, there was explosions on a car, and basically he realised that whatever happened there, it had come from the inside. So he's been investigating what happened there, somebody died in it, and it seems that some people went to prison who shouldn't have done because somebody ratted out the counting team and when you hear all this happening, it's just like, yeah, this was on the inside and it sounds like somebody lied to get some of the counting team in trouble when it seems like it wasn't the counting team that was the problem so yeah Viatoro is investigating that and it all comes back to that really and finding out who was involved and then basically William and Annie find themselves on a ranch which actually belongs to Jess Jess Rawlins and Jess at first doesn't know who to believe because Annie and William tell Jess what they saw and Jess is just there going, I don't know who to believe here. I want to call your mother. So he calls the mother's house and Swan answers the phone. The one that Annie and William got into the back of his car, realised he was involved and then they ran. So after that happens, Jess lies about why he's called Monica. He says, just like, oh, well, I hope the kids come back. So at that point, the kids have been declared missing. And he just lies and says, oh, during the, while they've been looking, they knocked down one of my walls. And I wanted to find out who, how to get that fixed. And so Swan just pushes him off and just says, you need to talk to the police department about that. Why are you calling Monica type thing? And that's the point when Jess is basically harbouring Annie and William. Annie and William are declared missing. This is part of the story that kind of pissed me off a little bit because they talk about how it has to be 24 hours until you can declare somebody missing. It was just like, that isn't a thing. No, that is not real at all. And also, it's certainly not real when it comes to children going missing because that would be the worst thing if I had to wait for 24 hours, especially in America. You know that in America, the 24-hour rule does not apply to children in any way, shape or form. If a kid is home late an hour... They can go to the police and people can start looking for them straight away. You don't have to wait 24 hours for that. And even for adults, that's not a thing either. But yeah, so the whole 24 hours before somebody's officially missing, that did grate on me a bit. But it was kind of important to the story that CJ Box has tried to tell. So it's one of those things that was just like, it's a misuse of a myth, basically. <laughs> I must admit, even if they took that out, it's used in connection to the kids and an adult in the story but even when in reference to the adult searching for him straight away wouldn't have been that effective to the plot so i don't really understand why people continue to use that myth of you can't be declared missing until you've been missing for 24 hours but especially with the kids storyline because it was just like no i mean they're, they're at a point where like they do have people stationed about saying like i think they finished school at something like 2 30 and go grab the fishing gear and walk off i think at that point monica's working which is why she doesn't know that they're missing and she also she heard the boyfriend saying that he wanted to take them fishing so i think she just assumes that that happened but because the boyfriend never showed up she comes home then he comes home 
and she's just like, where are the kids? And he's like, oh, I completely forgot I was supposed to take them fishing today. And she just, that's her, like, her, like, final moment where she's just like, get out. I never should have trusted you. I never should have let you in the house. I, don't, I can't believe that you tried to integrate into my children's lives when I did not even want to introduce you to them. Um, and so she kind of stands up for herself and kicks him out. It's so much happens. So much happens. And I was just on, like, the edge of my seat reading it. There were certain points when I was on the sofa reading it and I was thinking, oh, it's going to wrap up soon. And then more and more stuff kept happening. It was just like, how long am I going to be on this sofa reading this? Because there came a point when it was just like, surely we're coming to the end now. But then you reminded, oh, wait, no, this bit hasn't wrapped up yet. And this bit hasn't wrapped up yet. And it was just like, oh, my God, so much is happening. And I, yeah, I was just completely engrossed because there is a shoot out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reference to the point I was just like people are kidding each other I need to because I remember there was a point where my dad asked me what I was reading but it was such an action-packed chapter that I just couldn't answer him like I remember him asking me but I just remember thinking I just need to get through this because I'm still reading and he's waking up my flow when I can't answer so sorry dad if you if you ever watch this video I'm sorry I didn't answer you it was just that I was just so engrossed but to be fair I did explain to him afterwards that it was just an action-packed bit and it was just like oh, there's guns everybody's killing each other everybody's shooting each other and yeah so you're looking at it knowing who the baddies are the whole time and you're just trying to figure out like what they're going to do to find the kids how they want to be one step ahead of everybody else well to be fair they're trying to be 10 steps ahead of everybody else you got your mystery there were times when it was a little bit funny and yeah i could imagine this as a season of big sky i'm gutted that it got finished after se after three seasons considering the fact that this can't be a season of big sky this would work so well as an independent like mini series. I think there's too much for a film because they'd have to cut out so much. But I really think this would be a great mini series to really go into everything because it was just so good. I just could not put it down. I was just uh, completely addicted to this story and seeing what's going to happen in regards to the kids and the fact that the kids at the beginning they don't know who to trust. They get into a car while they're running away and find it. Oh wait, no, this guy is one of the bad guys. And so when Jess finds them in his barn and the kids don't know if they can trust him and they're just they're armed with pitchforks that they found in the barn and he doesn't know what to believe as well because he was just like oh but they say that they've been that there seems to be a group of people that are chasing them and he doesn't know what they witnessed all he's got is what the kids are saying and so he's just there thinking how do i know what they actually saw can they really not trust anybody and the thing that does it for him when he's just like, oh no, I need to keep these kids safe, is when he calls their mother, when he calls Monica's house and Swan picks up the phone. And the kids there see him lying about why he's called. And they were just like, well, is our mum there? And it was just like, well, he said she was there, but it was Swan, the man whose car you got into, who answered the phone, which is why I didn't say anything else. And that's the point when the kids and Jess, they start to trust each other more. Because the kids realise that this is a man that lied for them. And the fact that Swan answered the phone and was actually at their house means that Jess starts to believe the kids' point of view. There is so much more to this story. A lot of what I just said happens in the first couple of chapters. So it's not a spoiler. You do go into this book knowing who the bad guys are. And seeing how those bad guys integrate themselves into this community and try to look like heroes they're retired cops remember this and so when it comes to looking for the kids they want to look for the kids because they know that the kids witness what they did but because they're retired cops it means they can integrate themselves into the local law service and volunteer and seem like the good guys while trying to keep 10 steps ahead of everybody else in order to find the kids before anybody else does. Oh, it's just so good. It is so good. And as I said, I really could see this as a mini series. I think that would be the best justice for this after the book because a film just would have to cut too much. This is the second book in the Big Sky collection, Blue Heaven. That is the front cover of the Big Sky collection. 
So after this, we've got Back of Beyond, which is the first of the Cody Hoyt detective series where Cody Hoyt is like one of the main people you're looking at and then after that it goes into The Highway which I've got on Kindle. The Highway was the first book to be adapted for the TV series and then after that uh, Badlands is book five which I think does also go into season two and then it goes to Paradise Valley, The Bitter Roots and Treasure State. I think that's all of them. I need to double check, but as far as I'm concerned, that is all of them. But the Highway Badlands, Paradise Valley, The Bitterroot and Treasure State, I believe are all following Cassie Duell. And then the TV series also has Jenny Hoyt, which is Cody's wife. I'm just really enjoying it. I really enjoyed the second book, but it is very much its own entity within the series. But then it will go into Cody and then Cassie. And I know those characters from the TV series, so I feel like I'll be more on a level ground in regards to what I know of the TV series and how that relates to the books. Yeah, as I said, I finished that book last night and it was just like my mind was just boggled. And then I went straight into reading the first chapter of the um, next one, the Cody Hoyt one. And I've read a couple of chapters this morning as well. So you never know. I, I've got a day off today, so I might be able to actually read it all in one day. We'll see. <laughs> But yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you next time with a non-series book on Wednesday. <laughs> so stay safe. Love you. Bye.